So, as far as our competitors this evening, we have in this corner the Khaleesi of Canton, Ohio, your feminist superhero, Daria Quinn. Woo! <laughs> Issue a challenge to Daria for this evening. I do. Yay! Oh, Karen, no. give it Karen. to you. Karen. Welcome, welcome. You want to say anything by way of introduction other than you are a writer so powerful your words can slay cancer? No, not really. Okay. Slay like cancer is good enough. <laughs> All right, so we can flip a coin to see who goes first. Anybody have a coin? I do. Good. All right. All right. Mr. Patch? Can flip the pencil? Yeah, we can flip oh, the pencil. You want it? I will. Okay. Um, I need your phone for a timer. Yeah, I was going to time it. All right, cool. All right. All right, who wants to? So, Daria, since okay. you're scheduled, heads or tails? Uh, tails. Tails. Heads, that means Kara gets to choose. Do you want to go first or second? First, but where do I look when I'm reading? Where Everywhere. Everywhere you want to look. Or nowhere. You can close your eyes if you want to. I'm just a little nervous, okay? Just stand up. You can stand up and face Martin Luther King Jr. if you want to. I might have you me a little anxiety attack if everybody knows. That's fine. We all do. Look, I'm doing the wave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So. All right. If I get up. So yes, if you get up, up I will sit down, and you have the floor. Okay. All right. So uh, give her a countdown of yes. five. Five, four, three, two, W, one. Well, I'm Kara. The first thing you need to know is I don't really title my poems because you might gonna hear a lot of entitled today. Let's talk about real bitch cancer. You just weaseled your way in and attacked the essence of my physicality. Bitch, you haven't done it once, not twice, but three times. You squirmed yourself into me and made a home in the hollow parts where my kidney used to be. We plotted and raised a violent attack against you. The attack split me, oh, it split me open from breast to hip. Afterwards, I was disembodied. Pain surged and rumbled me. Slowly I healed, but you left me only for a season. Cancer, you squatter. You left your microscopic tendrils behind, leading you to get settled in, causing you to plant deeply within me. You weave and cushion my organs like you're an asset or a comfort to me, but you are nothing but a pariah, and you have no plans to leave. Mm. Um, I'll just call it I'm a Fighter. I wrote it um, the second time I found I had cancer. <laughs> I'm a fighter. My goal is to stand in the ring victorious. My opponent is bigger and stronger than I. Winning this battle is almost impossible, but I refuse to give up. I'm putting on my hot pink boxing gloves, facing my opponent, ready to swing. Each round I will battle with all my might, punching, blocking, kicking, and screaming. I will fight as blood pours down my face. I will kick and punch as hard as I can. Woo! Woo! Alright, Daria, it is your Woo. turn. Riding on the bus with headphones on. I don't appear to be feminine, so people just usually leave me alone. I've managed to go a very long time without being physically attacked. High school is the last time I remember anything like that. Still, the reality of being perceived as feminine in public comes with risks. Risks I can seemingly mitigate by appearing less feminine. But I wouldn't call this presentation masculine. It gives power to the false idea that masculine presentation is a default setting. There's nothing inherently masculine about a hoodie and sweatpants. Hell, more women than men I know wear this stuff anyway. Men wear jeans or shorts or slacks. Women wear sweats and yoga pants. Unless you're me. Then hopefully you're just invisible. Because I know this won't last. 
The only reason I haven't been attacked since my transition is because not enough time has passed. This illusion of masculinity doesn't really protect me. It only exists as a deterrent, something I do for peace of mind. One of these days, I'm going to be attacked. And it's not going to matter what I look like or how I dress. I can dress in a way that makes me less likely to be targeted, but I will be targeted. Whether it's by a man who wants to assert his power over a woman, or from a bigot who thinks they know my gender better than I do. It could be a sex crime or a hate crime, maybe both. I might survive this th the experience, but I might not. Every time I step outside of my home, I am at risk, even if all I'm doing is riding the bus with headphones on. of you want to say how you feel after this first round. Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. I'm, a little, okay. I'm a little, um, little underplaying today. Oh, no. I told you I was going to kick your ass. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> this is, I, 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 I was preparing for somebody of sound body and mind. Oh! Oh, shit. Instead, <laughs> oh! I'm taking on Francesca's mom. Oh, <laughs> you thought God. you could beat me? Could you be my mom? Oh, uh, I did beat okay, you. Okay, you did. Actually. And <laughs> you're still working on your win. Uh, and by the way, kudos on that because a lot of people in your position would have just given up. So. I'm very obsessed with that. I see that. <laughs> but your, your mom has your mom has come out of her busy day uh, fighting cancer and kicking its ass to attempt to speak, to step up to my level. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that when I do defeat you, um, fear not because, well, you're, in a, you're working at a disadvantage. I mean, it's like, you know, how, how are you going to beat me if you're spending all your energy fighting cancer? Hey, babe, I got lots of it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> all right, all right. All right, in round two, each fighter gets three minutes, and we go in the opposite order as before. So, Daria, it's on you. Four, three, two, and one. Why must you mix politics with your art? Don't you ever write about anything that makes you happy? Well, what makes me happy is smashing patriarchy while asserting myself as a valid human being. LGBTQ rights mean everything to someone who happens to be LGBTQ, and that just happens to be me. So yeah, maybe talking about that makes me happy. Too many people have tried too hard to pretend that people like me don't exist. They close their eyes, plug their ears, so I like it when I make it impossible to ignore that people like me are real and just as human as they are. Well, maybe. I'm not always sure. It's hard to find Nazis that aren't pure evil, wrapped up in skin, pretending to be people, dressed up like wolves passing off as sheep, in a mild life smorgasbord of things they'd like to eat. So maybe I don't care about being civil to a bunch of assholes who'd rather see me dead than to be the queer transgender woman here before you. I am done pretending to be nice to the fanatical right-wing Bible-thumping types. <clears throat> your, sick, your sick revision of Jesus never got it right, never mind the fact that you think he's fucking white. Mm. We are here to stay, and you will never win. Queers are like Hydra, a dragon you can't slay. Cut off a head, two more will grow back in its place. The more you clutch your pearls, the more brazen I become. Because making you mad is how I get my kicks. You want a happy poem? This is your happy poem. And that is why I mix art with politics. Nice. A passing glance of wicked ambition, she takes the stage, smiling as she greets a bloated figure of spoiled indulgence. She proceeds to let him dominate the conversation, as if his ideas have merit. She, she responds by conceding her defeat and watches silently as he claims her ideas as his own. Invisible woman, never meant to be seen or heard, for when she speaks, her words become the void. Give the words to a man and he's praised for his prestigious insight. But let a woman speak. Hmm. Get red or get dead, everybody go to bed. Kim Jong-un just got himself a warhead. Trump's in the White House, we're in the poor house. White folk talking about Nazis like the Mickey Mouse. Caging up immigrants, snatching up all the kids, sending them to the white folk, living up in Norfolk. 
institute a travel ban, send them back to Pakistan, spend a billion dollars to institute some space cops while telling poor folk to stop buying cell phones. You can either eat or you can have health care. You can't have both, so poor folk best beware. Spray tanned America is kind of a shithole. I really don't care, do you? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Daria, how do you feel so far? Um, somewhat emboldened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kara, your Woo! three minute Woo! round. Woo! Five, four, three, two, and one. Well, I didn't get to finish my last poem, and it's more important to me probably than it is to you. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it. Each round I will battle with all my might. Punching, blocking, kicking, and screaming. I will fight as blood pours down my face. I will kick and punch as hard as I can. At times, I'll get sucker punched right in the face. Every punch will hurt. I'll feel every blow. Sometimes, I'll get knocked out. If I lay flat face in the boxing ring while the referee counts, one, two, three, four. Don't count me out until the referee says 10. I may just rise and ready to fight again. Mm. Now the next one I'm going to read is called Ragdoll. I'm a ragdoll, just a regular raggedy Ann. You both fight over me. One hugs me to the left while the other jerks me to the right. I cannot speak up or fight back. My face is fixed with these twinkling eyes and its painted smile. In this tug of war, my lifeless head jerks back and forth, and my red locks dangle from side to side. I do not have the strength of a braided rope. If you pull me too hard, you will split me in half, exposing my sensitive stuffing. I will be in a terrible jam, and my damage would rest squarely on your shoulders. But see, I'm not a rag doll. Look at my arms. I have, my elbows bend and my fingers flex. You can tug at me and I have the power to let go. And if you look at my face, it isn't painted. My eyes can tear up or twinkle. That's not all. My lips can move and I can speak. Frown or smile. My body isn't lifeless. I'm alive. Yet, still I stand silent, letting you tug me back and forth. Each of you grasping one of my hands, pulling me lifelessly, flopping my head back and forth and side to side. <clears throat> I might as well be a rag doll because I haven't taken control. I haven't spoken up. And when I break from the pressure exposing my sensitive stuffing, the damage rests. Squarely on me. Uh, the next one I'm going to read is about my mother. <laughs> um, my mother and my husband, as you'll say. My mom, mom, you dislike him. No, you hate my husband. Maybe another time. Five <laughs> <laughs> right, seconds, keep going. <laughs> okay. You see his endless faults. I see his faults too. All right, okay. maybe another time. Yeah. <laughs> I give you points for attempting it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, our final and four minute round. We're going to flip the coin again to determine who goes next. All right, so Kara, your two heads or tails? Heads. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped it. Try again. Reflip. Reflip. It fell off my finger. All right. It is tails, Daria. First or second? Um, go second. All right. Here we get to hear the rest of that piece, right? No, something totally Ooh. new. All right. Oh, Give it up to Sharon. New shit. Five. New shit. Four, three. Two. One. <laughs> this table is immaculately arrayed. Bulls, purple, blue, green, and orange are filled with delectable candy, bottle caps, Hershey Kisses, Chewy Spree, Skittles. In the center of the table is a silver tray 
with the amount of nickel powdered donuts, six chocolate cream sticks, and a half a gallon of mint chocolate ice cream. A jumbo Cadbury milk bar sits next to the candy, other candy scattered on the table. Reese's Big Cup, Twix, Milky Way, Starburst, and Krispies, and Rice Krispie Treats. And finally, there are six 20-ounce bottles of Pepsi standing like soldiers. A morbidly obese woman smiles, sits down at the table, and tucks a napkin into her shirt. Everything on the table is hers. No judgment, no one to say no. She dips her fingers into the bowls of candy, shoving them into her mouth. Her chubby cheeks are bursting with food. Next, she devours the mint chocolate chip ice cream. Her mouth is filled to capacity, yet she ate an entire cream stick in one bite. Everything is eaten so quickly. Can she even taste it? Yes. The candy, the donuts, the chocolate, and the ice cream tantalize her tongue. She shoves her face and gulps. Mouthful after mouthful, she gulps. No food on the table remains untouched. Well, who did you see at the table with, the powdered, with powdered sugar smeared across her face? Did you see a fat girl licking the chocolate off her fingertips? Or did you see me? Because it was me. Gulping and gulping food. Swallow after swallow, it was me. That's my nightmare. My alter ego. A peek into my fantasy. I'm a binge eater, but I've never had that amount of food. Why do I binge? Well, it tastes good. <laughs> it's like it, it feels good. <laughs> But the real reason I'm gulping down is I'm gulping down my problems. I just want to escape. I just want to push the food to dark places where I hold my secret pain. I shove them down anywhere they can fit. I want to release from the stress, the worries, the anxiety, and most importantly, I want to release from the pain. I'm eating my self-hatred, my self-disgust, but this never works. This never works. The pain now more intense, siphons back into me, but yet I return to it again and again. Okay, judge me, but what about you? Everybody finds a release some way. I can focus on the drug addicts or the alcoholics, but I won't. Let's just say your problem is jelly beans. You turn around to those jelly beans again and again. You need those jelly beans. You need anything to push the emotions away, because we all have to suck it up, buttercup. We got jobs to do, supervisors to please, a house to clean, a spouse to charm, a child to guide, and none of this comes easily. But I'm sick of this, aren't you? Well, I'll put down my fork and you throw away those jelly beans. No more gulping pain. This won't be easy. We have to feel that pain, that trauma. And, but we can do something fun and engaging. We can paint, draw, color, write or journal, sing, or turn the music up and scream. Talk to someone, anyone, a counselor, animals in the zoo, call a hotline if you need to, or just chat with your kitty cat. Cry, wail, sob until you're gagging for breath. It's better than shoving it, pushing it into a room, locking the door. Don't do it because... <laughs> <laughs> for our second half of the final round. Please welcome back, Dario! There is something that you hear a lot living inside the Jesus bubble, that we are living in the biblical end times, as laid out in the book of Revelation. <laughs> for most of my life, I believed that this was a scare tactic. Something preachers use to motivate their congregations to act against their own self-interests and the interests of the planet, because why try to save something that's doomed to destruction? So it comes as no surprise to me that I would eventually see the headline, Earth is now entering its sixth extinction-level event. Because, of course it is. Why wouldn't it be? People have spent their entire lives trying to fulfill this prophecy because they just wanted to see Jesus return to Earth so badly and now they're succeeding. We are literally screwed. The earth is baking itself to death, and we're the cause. There's nothing we can do about it now. It's too far gone. We were warned for 
decades that this was an emergency situation. Climate change was real and we needed to act immediately. But that Jesus bubble, man, they've been looking forward to a way to speed up the apocalypse and global warming seemed like a can't miss prospect. It fulfills biblical prop prop prophecy almost too well. A worldwide famine that starves humanity to death, a third of the world spontaneously combusting into flame, mm. poisoned water that runs red like blood, and oceans that boil in the light of the sun. All we need now is a tyrannical parent patriarch who claims to be an international savior. <laughs> oh me, oh my, I wonder where in America we could find one of those. <laughs> With the stage now set, the festivities can begin. It's the moment that all of Christendom have been waiting for ever since they were kids. In the red corner, the future of humanity as it stands. And in the blue corner, a vengeful planet ready to take her power back. In the mm. balance is life as we know it. Something quickly coming to an end as we foolishly wait for Jesus Christ running. Mm. I left four weapons by your grave. A sword, an axe, a torch, and a switchblade. I think you'd find them handy should your body regenerate to reclaim the justice of the revenants. They hung you from a tree like Emmett Till for the role you played in Ferguson. It's 2018, and the strange fruit still hangs off the killing trees in St. Louis. Racism hasn't died yet, and I don't know how to fight it. But I can only hope your name sparks a remedy. They tried to say this was a suicide, but we can see that it's just a lie. Dane Jones, rise up and take justice in your name. We can only hope you return as a crow to right the wrongs and save the souls of the others who were murdered just the same. Mike Brown and Tamir Rice... Eric Garner, Stephon Clark, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Walter Scott, Eric Harris, Laquan McDonald, Terrence Crutcher, Tony Robinson, Romaine Brisbane, Trayvon Martin, and countless others. Strange fruit dangling, murdered by white men. I left four weapons by your grave, a sword, an axe, a torch, and a switchblade. So when you rise again, you can take up your revenge on the system that helped you step into that grave. Racism hasn't died off yet, and I don't know how to fight it, but I can only hope your name sparks a remedy. They tried to say this was a suicide. We know that's a lie. Dane Jones, rise up and claim your justice. judges are doing their final figuring. Uh, we should ask the crowd, how do you feel? Are Woo! You... All right, who, who does the, who does the, who does the audience think should win? My bad. <laughs> audience, <laughs> if, you, if you think Harris should win, clap in here right now. food drive at the moment. We can make yes. that announcement later. Um, right. Well, actually, I can talk about the food drive yeah, yeah. Um, because there's quite a few, um, I'm sure, delicious mm -hmm. things over there that have been contributed already. Yeah, that's yours and all of that food is going to the Canton Sunday Picnic, which Woo! I am one of the volunteers that runs that. So if you are still looking to contribute, the things that we can use the most of are cooking oil, brown rice, and coconut milk. Yay. Believe it or not, those are the things that so rarely get donated that we and we go through a lot of those. So brown rice, cooking oil, and coconut milk, like the cans of coconut milk, or even coconut cream. Type of cooking oil, like canola. Canola is yeah. good, um, but the mixed vegetable oil is good, and so is olive oil. Not yeah. peanut oil because some people are allergic. Yeah, sure. yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah. And then we're going to be doing a clothing drive in December. Um, which the clothing for that will go to the, the Domestic Violence Project. So it can be um, women's clothing, men's clothing, children's clothing, uh, non-gender specific clothing, um, but it does need to be intended for winter. 
because they don't have space to store things for summer, so flip-flops, don't donate them now. <laughs> I mean, they can be used to shower shoes, but don't, don't donate bathing suits and shorts right now, mm -hmm. and not tank tops. So things that can be worn comfortably in cold weather are the best things to donate for that. Um, I'd just like to say, too, we're doing uh, fire made, or Firewood and Imagination 2, Patch Adams. It's going to yes. be here until the yes, third Yes, Patch, would you like to tell us about the amazing things we see on the walls here? So, uh, anyway, um, local artists, international artists, um, what I'm doing is, this is some type of work that I have started doing about 20 years ago. Um, what I do is I paint with fire on wood. Uh, it's a technique that I call pyrochromatic arts, and uh, it takes quite a bit of time to do what I've done. Uh, there's variations, people that claim they paint with fire, where they collect soot on canvas, they hook up car batteries to a board, to where people pour uh, gunpowder on wood and set it on fire. But... What I've done is uh, figured out a way to actually mix mediums in a way that makes them flammable. Um, oils, acrylics, watercolors, inks, pigments, all types of stuff. So um, this is the second showing of a collection of mine for this year, hence the title, Firewood and Imagination 2. Um, the first one was at Jupiter Studios over in Alliance. Woo! Woo! So Crystal. Woo! <laughs> and uh, second those one. Those of you who haven't been to Jupiter Studios, yes. it is awesome. Absolutely. You really should go. Absolutely. Good people over there as well. Um, so this is a second showing here in Canton, and I live in Canton. And one of the things that I really enjoy about this show is usually when I show here in Canton is... Like, you only get to see one or two of my works. Otherwise, you're following me on Facebook, and you'll see. I, I try to post at least one a day anymore, because mm -hmm. I've just, I've been at this for well over two decades. Um, Too long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> me and Art go back to where, you know, I was up in the womb, five months, First drawing K pictures. <laughs> right, right, right. right. I said it before I said it. <laughs> drew it before I drew it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so um, this type of work I've been doing for almost 20 years now. Uh, before this, I was doing uh, glass carving. I believe I'm the first artist of Stark County to make it into Juxtapose magazine. Um, laundry list of, of accomplishments. Um, you know, I'm here for a lot of the up-and-coming artists, creatives, and it's not just visual artists, it's just arts in particular, as far as, like, um, um, acting, writing, visuals. Poetry. But poetry, correct. Uh, creative arts. I, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of it. Uh, the arts can change lives and has changed lives. I'm living proof of that myself. So, but, anyway, back to <laughs> what I'm doing here. So it's, it's kind of cool because you guys are seeing my work more than one or two pieces at a, t at a time. I've got over 40 pieces here, um, just a collection of from, gosh, as far back as 2004, 2003 to 2018, and... Uh, it's kind of something really special. I just wanted to share with, with the community and let you guys know, you know, there's, there's no shame in being different in what you create. I know my work is unique. I know it stands out. I don't paint on canvas. I don't paint on paper. I created a whole different style technique. And that's honestly what it is, is finding your voice and using it and just doing it. And believing in it. I'm no Picasso, but I believe in what I do. So, Oof. firewood and imagination. It's a beautiful thing, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, till November 30th? Yes, okay. yes. So come check it out. a limited amount of time to come and see all 40 of these amazing pieces. 
Woo! Right. Are we ready with some results? We are ready with some results. All right. Get up. very much to um, Michael of Makeshift Makerspace and all the hosting that they have done for us here. Woo! All right. You want to yes, stand yes. Up? Better stand up. Yeah. Do you need a mug for the cameras? Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right. In a unanimous decision, 30, 27, 30, 27, and 29, 28, our winner Daria Quinn. Oh. So, All right, um, so we're going to go on to our open mic. Woo, we'll do, do recorded open mic first, and then we'll shut off the cameras, and anyone who wants to share on the unrecorded can do that. All right, so who, by a show of hands, who wants to be in the recorded open mic? Mad cow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> angry cow. Angry cow. Angry cow. Angry cow. Angry cow. Angry. Who would want to be in the unrecorded open mic? Just a couple of hands for that. Uh, who doesn't care? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. Well, if you got something to share, right? out there? I mean, if it's recorded, it's recorded. Okay, okay, cool. All right. Keith, would you like to start us off for the... Oh, wait, we're going to do a call a break, for minute. people who want to challenge. Oh, yes, yes. So, do we? are we still looking for somebody for December? Yes, we are looking for some fighters for December. So. All right, so... So, who to would everybody like? here and everybody who is watching online or will be watching online, we want you to put out a call. I think we got a challenger over a here. Challenger. Really? Um, yeah. Okay. Speak up. Speak I'll up. Do it again. Oh. Oh. I'm ready to get beat again. Um, tell us <laughs> again. My name is Francesca. And what do you want to have happen? That's awesome. I'm hopefully want to win. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> and what, do you, what message do you want to send to whoever comes against you? You might win. Might! Oh. <laughs> 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 yes. I, I believe that what Francesca meant to say was that she is looking forward to her first win. <laughs> and she's looking forward to having that first win oh. in December. <laughs> Against uh, whomever may uh, okay, okay. whomever may come by, possibly her mother. Um, Ooh, family feud. That, um, no. We could do a whole mother daughter thing. <laughs> Anyone else? Right. Any other people so who want to put out a call? We'll a challenge. Some Lay some groundwork for their sword fight. Anybody? Yeah, Angry no. cow. Uh, yeah, no. Angry Cow will take on. Oh, oh, oh man. Oh, Challenger. Oh, oh, I will take on whoever, however this sets up. All right. So, Angry Cow is also in. Yeah, I'm, I'll keep him if you're done. If you want to take a picture of me, you can. It's okay. I read him. Okay, cool. Mostly I ran under time. That was a problem. <laughs> yeah. All right, There's so. There's no performance that ran under time. Mm -hmm. So, and then we, we would all like to remind you that January 19th. Yes. At Avenue Arts, the uh, Kathleen Howland Arena. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uh, Theater. Arena. 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 I'm approaching this as a fighter, not as a <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Arena. Arena. January 19th, the Astalude, the tournament for the first ever Writing Night Sword Fighting Championship. Woo! The With the pencils! 
pencil. The pencil. The three of pounds of wood. The pencil of wood. And of course, <laughs> your first official entrant into that tournament, Darian Quinn, Ooh. will be defending her three and O record against <laughs> whomever decides to show yeah. up. You still have what about a month or yep. about the month? Uh, <coughs> a little sign over up? a month. Yep. Pretty so good. So that's uh, writingnights.com. Mm-hmm. And you under go the there, sword fight tab. And you can sign up and. You don't have to add a sword fight to join in the fun, but... Can we nominate people? They have to agree to it. They have to agree to it. Awesome. But I think you need nominated. Nominated for... I think you need to sword fight somebody. Sword fight somebody. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you are a rapper, right? Yeah. So yeah. I'm writing so for raps. It's, 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 time to, it's time to put up. Fight against you. Okay. Yeah. Cool. It's good publicity, at least. Yeah. Who are your raps? Right now? Yeah, do it. Oh, 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 oh. Let's put on the spot. Sorry. Oh, you're good. You got the gun there with you. Okay. Woo! Right. Woo! Well, either this is there a particular way I should both, face. Both cameras yeah, alive. I don't know. Both, both cameras alive. Yeah. At the same time. Okay. <laughs> Woke up late this morning with some lesions in my head. Ah, bloody all over. Almost couldn't comprehend. It makes me sick when I drift like this and I can't control the thoughts inside my mind. Like a blunder, but I can't rewind. I'm trapped in lost in space and time. Whoa. Putting pieces together like it's a game of Clue. Investigate the murder. You heard of what Colonel Mustard do? Bashing people's heads with the crowbar or the shiv. Well, guess who? Was it the man with hair and earring jewels? Or is it that blondie with blue eyes and the tattoos? Could it be the lady with small lips and a bad mood? Well, someone is in trouble, so you better pop that bubble. Feel the click and feel the sweat. It's like you're running out of breath. Guess at a time that I pick up the pace and I'll go through it. Also, I'm winning this race. Something is trivial. Checkmate, I'm killing you. Aiming down the sights. About to go, yikes. All right, fine. I got it. Admit that I don't use guns, so how do I get to the point where I'm firing off a click click? Scrabble my mind because of brain trauma. Fit these words inside a nightline because I'm so broke. Ain't no joke. Peanut butter bread is filling this hole. Still want mo. That's for sure. Writing these lines like a blindfold loan. All right, get back to the point here. Found two dead in a dull long rapier. Sit like categories with the evidence in front of me. Sherlock Holmes himself would even request extra company. Agatha Christie couldn't sift through misty ambiguity. Scratch our heads to lottery tickets. Everyone's a mystery. Feel like my mind is a car without brakes. Pumping so hard and afraid of the sticks. Grilling these perps just like a new foreman. Lining them up to start to determine well. Who done it? I don't know. Last lot like a TV show. Got to swing. I scream. Oh no! Point that gun with no ammo. Woke up to some darkness and the noises that our car would make could barely even breathe. Given this guy's sweaty socks and taste, we go so fast I inhale gas. How can I free these arms? How can I free these legs? The taste of fungus mayonnaise. My marinated breath floods my esophagus. Sends stingles down my spine. Pressure shoots through the mind. My butt cheeks start to clench. A thirst I need to quench. The car it comes to a halt. Body momentum keeps up. Soon as the trunk goes a jaw. And up a cut to his jaw. Running and running because I'm so scared. Where am I going and where have I been? Going in circle, been jumping through hurdle. Been wondering when this will cut to commercial. I'll be lying around my head into a tree. Fall back with everything turned to debris. Finally get to just open my eyes. Waking up late. Again, why even try? <laughs> nice. Nice. Keith, you ready? Keith. Uh, amount of time? How long do we want? Uh, for? between hour. Twenty-four hours. Between, <laughs> between two and five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> two and five. Yeah. All right. Come on, let me know when I'm getting closer, right. and I'm standing in the round. All right. All right, this first one is called Hollow Applause. You cheer when your president calls out fake news and attacks the press. You applaud when your president suggests banning protest. You celebrate when your president tries to stop Muslims from entering the country. You support your president as he promises to negate the 14th Amendment. So when you say you love the Constitution, what you really mean is simply that you love guns. Mm. Mm. This one I wrote right before the election, thank you, called I Hope God is Playing Golf on Tuesday. <laughs> I've noticed every time I hear election results were the work of God, or in the words of Franklin Graham, I believe this election God showed up, that the winner is so divinely chosen is always from the same party, and it makes me wonder what God is doing the rest of the time. Does God only occasionally care about a political victor? Did God in November of 2012 have a hot date? Maybe God was caught in celestial traffic or stranded with a flat tire. Maybe the couch was too comfy and God was binge-watching Cheers reruns during the eight years of Obama. Maybe God simply doesn't have the power to influence all elections and has to pick and choose only certain ones. K 
Can you really believe there's a God who has the power and the will to determine the results of elections, but only shows up when your winner is announced? Mm. Mm. This, uh, this is a response. There's a, a ballot measure in California that did pass that uh, was to improve the conditions of farm animals. And in it, one of the farmers they highlighted talked about how his farm was chicken Disneyland because he hung toys for them. So this is called the surprise look on their severed heads was priceless. In an article about a voter proposition asking that chickens get cushier lives of still being crammed together but without cages, a highlighted farmer refers to his place as Chicken Disneyland because of the toys he has started to hang for them to play. How sweet, how kind it must be. Your memories of Disneyland must be flashing through your head. The cool sights, the fun sounds, all the things to enjoy, the way your children got so excited as they stood in line for Big Thunder Mountain. The screams of joy, the hands in the air, oh, the smiles until the climax of the ride's end. The magic captured forever for you on film as the ride concludes decapitating each one. A small price to pay, you remind yourself, for the joy on their faces. You are glad you didn't ruin their day by giving away the secret of how the ride ends beforehand. You'd go back, you insist, if only you had more kids to send on the rides. Nice. Cut me off. Whatever. You cut me off, man. How many, how many more you got? I have Keep three, but I can stop Go for it. Tell me Do one. All right. Next one is called In Order of Jesus, Hold the Love. Sometimes the very same people who shout the loudest about their Christianity have a very different memory of the Bible than mine. Ignore the sick. My neighbor is not my problem. Wait, I thought the Bible said love. Hate the gays. Strange. I could have sworn it said love. America first. I don't remember Jesus drawing lines nor picking favorites. Build walls, keep them out. But wasn't there something about whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me? Let the poor fend for themselves. Weird, my recollection was love. Kill your enemies before they kill you. God, I was certain it was love. I guess I could grab a Bible, glance back, refresh. It has been a few years. Perhaps my memory is fuzzy. Hmm. This is called The Endless Wait for the Right Time. This is not the right place. Lunch counter, football field, Edmund Pettus Bridge. This is not the right time. 1955, 1991, 2018. This is not the right way. Marching, sitting, kneeling. The simple truth is that for you, the right time is never. The right way is silence. And the right place is far away from you. Hmm. And the last one I actually wrote this morning called The Endless Line. Ooh, new shit. New shit. New shit. <laughs> new shit. Faster, they tell me. More cuts, more speed. Grueling conditions brought on by greed. A job, they tell me. That's what I need. I have three children I've got to feed. Kill chickens, they say, as fast as you can. 14,000 a day by my own hands. The line's too fast. I can't keep up. My fingers bleed from all the cuts. My hands ache, my arms are sore, but every day they demand more. Imelda complained, ice broke down her door, so I keep my mouth shut on the slaughterhouse floor. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, I wrote this piece to read at my uh, grandmother's memorial service. There didn't end up being any time for that. I guess my family's control freaks. <laughs> <laughs> called Christmas bread. She called it Christmas bread, and Thanksgiving bread, and Easter bread, for whichever holiday it was her favorite to make. A sweet white bread with candied fruits and nuts. No alcohol here, not a fruitcake. I don't know how it became grandma's staple or how it became synonymous with love. From an early age, it was very clear, you don't turn down Christmas bread. You'll learn to like it, one relative told me. You'll hurt her feelings if you say no. So I would take the smallest piece, trying for more nuts, less fruit. Still got a lecture on the size of my piece of pumpkin pie. Eventually, I learned somewhere else that food and love aren't the same thing. 
that turning down food isn't rejecting love, that made with love is who we are, not what we eat. The world did not end the first holiday when I passed the bread plate without taking any. Maybe a few held their breath. After cleanup, I curled on the, up on the couch next to Grandma and said I appreciated all the effort and time she put into the Christmas spread. I'm glad to receive that love, even if the bread isn't my favorite. I don't know if she understood, or if maybe later she did. Regardless, she kept making the Christmas spread, and all the other people kept eating it. And we all received her love. Our taste buds don't have to be the same, nor our tolerance for white flour and sugar. We have all of our senses with which to perceive the family bonds, and we are wise enough to know what fills our hearts may not fill our bellies. We are made with love. Mm. All right, not recorded open mic. So I'm, I'm okay with being recorded. You want to be recorded? All right. I will, I will record my... All right, All right, give it up for Asriel. Woo! Hey, hey. I wrote a bunch of small pieces. Uh, I, uh, myself and uh, Aria, the person who helps us run the fourth Wednesday <coughs> reading in Kent. Uh, at the we, outpost? At the Woo! outpost. We went to uh, one of the other readings in Kent at the last exit, and... There were some things that happened that needed me to write about them. So I'll do the short ones first, and then I'll do the longer ones. Um, so and if any of you know Daniel Thompson or D.A. Levy, this one is... Uh, the person there did a hippie-ish song about, like, with one of their poems. I hope after I die, hippies make songs out of my pieces. That's all. That's, that was real quick. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, my friend believed so hard in the Bible that he said that men were missing a rib because of the existence of women. <laughs> Alright, so these are slight. Is that the wrong one? No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, okay, so this. There was a guy there that I focused on for about 10 minutes to write this piece. I wonder if it hurts to pinch one's face in pensiveness for two and a half hours. This must turn into a habit so ingrained that the muscle memory will never be unlearned. A memory so deep that it will imprint itself on the face of my children. Everyone who sees me must know I am a serious artist as I attend the monthly open mic and sit like the thinker with a newsy cap. This pose will also permeate my children. They might even come out that way. <laughs> my poor wife, she will suffer so. The birth will be easy. <laughs> So, there were a lot of white folks at that place. Like, I, I realize that I am also white, but there were a lot of white folks at that place. Okay. So, so, we're talking this one. White. And all the black folks want to make folks. There they are. Okay. He said, where's the black folks? Where's the black folks? <laughs> This just in case somebody asks. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. So, so I, yeah, so these, these next two are actually comments about, like, Wait, no, I, I, I dig the piece about, about um, you know, the social injustice that's mm -hmm. been happening for, I, I'm sorry, I'm bad with names, Daria? Yes. 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 The, the Daria wrote. Mm -hmm. Um, recognizing, you know, mm -hmm. African Americans, P POC, people of color, yep. mm -hmm. uh, being assaulted, you know, that type of stuff. I I really dug that, and uh, I think it was an amazing piece. Thank and you. really, uh, here I am, like just giving out, <laughs> just <laughs> criticizing right in front of everybody. Know, but huh? it's a it's a beautiful work. Um, if you're writing about stuff like that. Um, Definitely keep bringing that energy. Focus on that more. 
because I, I heard what you're saying. I dig it. And it was, it kind of, and I was like, oh shit, you know, this, she's like spitting some shit here. I, so, I, I, wish I, would have heard. I was honestly, I, I was honestly afraid that it would, if it was like feeling like I was stepping out of my own lane there. There's a fine line. And I, did, I didn't want to be that person. And you got to it. You were like right there. And you're like, hey, you know, I see this. But I respect this. The, I respect it, and I I was like, that's that was really cool how you presented that. Thank you. And with your work about cancer, my mother's a cancer survivor. I loved it. I it it, it was uh, interesting hearing both sides. It was like two different subjects, but I get both of them because so my, my my experience <laughs> my experience I, I've dealt with both issues so personally. Um, I appreciate both of your guys' stuff. It was beautiful. It was amazing. That's what you call the understanding. Yes. That's what you call the understanding. The, 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 well, right. the only thing I, I, I guess I wanted to get to is that stuff, focus on it, and bring that fucking fire. Mm -hmm. You know? What about my last piece? Oh, honest opinion. Growing up and stuff that you experienced is always a beautiful thing, but which brings it back to what I was about to say is bringing that that energy, that fire. Like if you gotta blurt it out, just fucking say it. Pardon my French, but just fucking say it. <laughs> you know, don't. There's no reserve when you're when you're orating. You know, you, it's you versus us. This is your world when you are orating, when you are speaking, talking, fucking scream it out, Say yell it. Like you mean. Exactly, yeah, exactly, you. exactly, exactly. It's your world. Who cares if we don't understand it? You understand it. Everybody you got a right it. to it's it. It's your opinion, energy yeah. into your words. So, anyway. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I know it isn't, it isn't the same, but I feel a little out of my element. Sitting in an avalanche of poets, wondering if poet voice will cascade me down the mountain of poetic conformity. A monotone disaster, shaking in waves like a vocal earthquake, distracting from the brain with boring tones. This is the Keanu Reeves of poetry, <laughs> an everyman of words allowing room for the listener to insert themselves into the pieces like the Matrix. If you die during the piece, you die in real life. <laughs> and this one, I was mad about this one. The blackening blacks stereotyped in the white old guy's attempt at William S. Burroughs' Naked Lunch. <laughs> Grabbing that word in fiction doesn't make it okay to say in 2018, I hate to be this politically correct, but geez, you aren't Mark Twain. It isn't the 1800s. Even when it was accepted, it wasn't really acceptable. Yeah, I know, I hate the idea of not using words, believe me, but until POC are no longer oppressed, until the system no longer favors your skin color and gender, I feel like you can pick another word. There are so many. This isn't white genocide. This is a beseeching to be slightly more sensitive. You can still be edgy without racism. I promise. Say to the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to be recorded? All right. Woo, woo. Bye, Facebook people. Thanks for coming out. Bye. Bye. Thanks for staying in, apparently. <laughs>